Welcome, Ukraine war update today. Ukraine says it repels attack around Blahodan, Wagner claims control. Ukraine's military said on Sunday its forces repelled an attack in the area of Blahodan in the eastern part of the Donetsk region, while Russia's Wagner private military group said it took control of the village. Units of Ukraine's defense forces repelled the attacks of the occupiers in the areas of Blahodan in the Donetsk region, the general staff of Ukraine's armed forces said in its daily morning report, referring to fighting on Saturday. It added that its forces repelled Russian attacks in the areas of 13 other settlements in the Donetsk region. The Wagner Group, designated by the United States as Transnational Criminal Organization, said on the Telegram messaging app on Saturday that its units had taken control of Blahodan. With fighting heating up in the Donetsk region, the exact line of contact has been unclear, especially around the town Bakhmut, where some of the heaviest fighting of the war has been taking place in recent weeks. The Wagner Group has made premature success claims before. Ukraine has said that the Russian offensive on Bakhmut has not culminated, but the situation along the front line there has been growingly difficult. President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Friday that it was acute. Four civilians were killed, one in Bakhmut, and 17 wounded in Russian attacks on the region on Saturday, Pavlo Kirilenko, governor of the Donetsk region said on the Telegram messaging app. Ukraine has won promises of Western battle tanks and is seeking fighter jets to push back against Russian and pro-Moscow forces, which are slowly advancing along part of the front line. On Saturday, Zelensky's top aide said that expedited talks were underway between Ukraine and its allies about its requests for long-range missiles to prevent Russia from destroying Ukrainian cities. Is this the week when the war dramatically turned in Ukraine's favor? It was certainly a decisive moment, with a coalition of Western nations confirming they were finally willing to supply modern-made main battle tanks. Germany said it would send Leopard 2 tanks and the US said it would send M1 Abrams tanks. Both the UK and Poland have already made concrete pledges, and other nations are expected to follow. Some commentators have described the move as a potential game-changer. But is it really enough to win the war? Ben Berry, senior fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies ISS, tells the BBC that Western tanks will make a difference. But the former British Army brigadier also warns that the pledges made so far are unlikely to prove decisive. In modern warfare, tanks have been a key element for offensive operations to punch through enemy lines and retake territory. Used effectively, they provide mobile firepower, protection, shock and surprise. Concentrated in numbers, they can dislocate an enemy's defenses. But they also need the support of artillery to first weaken those defenses and then the support of infantry to hold retaking ground. History shows tanks alone don't win battles. The British first used hundreds of tanks at the Battle of Cambrai in November 1917 to end the deadlock of static trench warfare. Initially they made significant advances, but many tanks soon broke down and a German counter-offensive turned British gains into losses. Tanks can also be used in defense. In 1940 they were used by the retreating British and French armies at Arras to stall the Nazi invasion, allowing the subsequent evacuation of British troops from Dunkirk. But Ukraine has made clear that it wants weapons not just to stall any potential Russian spring offensive, but to retake its own territory to go on the attack. It would make little sense for Ukraine to disperse its additional tanks across a front.